distinguished ministers, members of multilateral agencies, and NGOs. I present my warmest greetings today from the government and citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis as one of the 38 small island developing states, SIDS, across the globe. I wish to, above all, express my deep appreciation to the UNESCO IHP program and UN Water for allowing me to address some of the challenges we face in optimizing our groundwater resources. Firstly, we across the Caribbean continue to face chronic shortages in fresh water. We still must resort to limiting the availability of fresh water by imposing rationing as the whole region enters yet another dry season. This comes alongside associated challenges of coastal erosion, rising sea levels, inundation of deltas, as well as flooding and loss of many marshes and wetlands. Increased saltwater intrusion is also a problem in coastal aquifers. In early March, a report by the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, backed by 270 scientists from 67 countries, concluded that rising sea levels pose an existential threat for some small islands. I don't think I would be exaggerating if I were to say that this could result in small island nations facing an almost dystopian situation one in which their sources of fresh water are depleted long before the run out of land because of rising sea levels. The vulnerability factor of water supplies in small islands was heightened more recently as we struggled to deal with the effects of COVID-19. Governments across the entire Caribbean region have been confronted with the challenge as to how their citizens are expected to protect themselves adequately when they face shortages of clean water to simply wash their hands. A second factor is the destructive nature of the hurricanes in our tropical regions, such as Hurricane Dorian of 2019 that ripped through the Bahamas, inflicting another damaging feature, contamination of the groundwater supplies. A broad scientific consensus now exists that climate change effects are felt by humans through its impacts on water resources, including groundwater and water-related disasters such as flooding and droughts. Exacerbating this trend are the human responses to these impacts arising from increasing groundwater abstraction due to extended and more frequent droughts. Drought conditions have made our residents sharply aware of the challenges to their water resources. My government's investment of $1 million in system improvements to create new wells, recommission old ones, and install pipelines to increase the supply of water to the communities etc. is only part of the solution. Saltwater intrusion, for instance, is related to overpumping of groundwater resources and this calls for the need to introduce artificial recharge and wastewater treatments etc. Ensuring access to good quality groundwater in SIDS is a challenge and very serious. Consequently, an urgent need has arisen to address these water challenges by identifying priorities for action at the highest political level, building on existing partnerships. We increasingly look to our traditional expert partners, UNESCO's Intergovernmental Hydrological Program, IHP, and other specialized UN agencies and non-UN organizations to provide guidance. In this endeavor, we take note of the recognition of SIDS vulnerabilities and the need to support their sustainable development ambitions enshrined in the Mauritius strategy of implementation of the program of action 
for the Sustainable Development of SIDS, Mauritius Strategy 2005, and the Small Island Developing States Accelerated Modalities of Action, Samoa Pathway 2014. Both highlighted the priority concerns of addressing pollution of water resources and lack of access to sufficient safe water. But we urge UNESCO IHP and the other water-related multilateral organizations and NGOs to accompany us in the Caribbean in integrating watershed and aquifer management, which incorporates the social dimension of water resources and promotes and develops international research in hydrological and freshwater sciences. A primary objective of these interventions is to support the Caribbean, Pacific, and Indian Ocean seeds to strengthen their scientific, technical, and policy capacities to manage human health and environmental risk caused by emerging pollutants in water and wastewater by improving water quality and wastewater management and promoting safe reuse of wastewater, ultimately contributing to enhance water and food security. Finally, I suggest that we review how we manage food production, groundwater supply, and our fragile ecosystems, which tend to be viewed in perfect isolation when addressing vulnerabilities. All three are in fact complex, intertwined factors and need to be addressed with interconnected policy instruments and not in a silo fashion. My starting point is that, ultimately, we must focus on the holistic water objective linked to sustainability development goal number six, defined as clean water and sanitation. I affirm that the sustainable development for the Caribbean small islands can only be achieved by prioritizing and complementing those targets of the Agenda 2030 relating to Sustainable Development Goal 6 and in particular the universal and equitable access to drinking water, sanitation and hygiene improving water quality, implementing integrated water resources management at all levels and protecting and restoring water-related ecosystems such as wetlands, rivers, aquifers, and lakes. The government of St. Kitts and Nevis stands ready to act as a catalyst in developing a platform to enable this dialogue to materialize. Thank you for listening.